Hey, it's Mike. Let's talk about Reaper. Earlier this week, I had planned to make a video showing how to use mid-side processing. In the example that I had planned to show, I was going to show you how I used mid-side processing to help accentuate a lead guitar in the middle of heavy rhythm guitars. But as I began to make that video, it dawned on me that I don't really know what I'm talking about. I would dare say that most people without training believe that mid-side processing means center and side processing, which simply is not true. While I did achieve the desired end result by using mid-side processing, it was very bothersome to me that I didn't truly understand what I was doing. One amazing benefit of our Discord community is the ability to ask much more experienced people for help. In this case, I reached out to John Matthews from Toucan Studios to help me and you to better understand mid-side processing. Hi Mike, you definitely don't know what you're talking about. Let me show you. You took me to say that, or um, what was that? Wow, Mike, you really don't understand mid-side processing. I think I can help you out of a... Uh, Okay, I'll try to explain something. To understand what is going on with that mid and side thing, we have to um, understand to read the goniometer. This is a plugin, a Tucan stereo meter, um, which contains this goniometer thing. And um, for reading this, I decided to um, generate a um, signal that is so slow we can't hear it but we can see it better. So, as we can see, the signal starts at the zero crossing here and is moving upwards and then going down, 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 and then up, 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 and so on. And um, this is what we expect this little blue dot in the goniometer to do to show us where is this line at the present time. So if I hit play, you can see this. So there's this tiny little blue dot moving there. And actually, this is not completely correct. This was just for uh, introducing um, that we can see something. Um, we have two signals here. This signal and this signal in the other track. And they are routed to um, completely left and completely right. So if I now mute the right channel, here's what's going on in the goniometer. And we can see um, that this now moves in an angle of um, 45 degrees. And this is because um, this is the axis for the left channel value. So if we input a high uh, value, it moves up here. And if we input this low value, it moves down there. And for the right channel, it's um, up here and down down there of course. So let me mute this track and we're gonna see signal on the right channel. So now if I um, enable both of the channels this is what happens. And now, of course, we're wondering why is that so, that we don't see two blue dots, one moving on the left channel and one moving on the right channel. And for this, I made a little presentation and I hope that's not too complicated. So imagine this is our goniometer and maybe we have level on the left channel. And um, the dot is moving all the way up to this point. We could also say, it's moving to the left and it's moving upwards. And as a result of moving to the left and moving upwards, 
it uh, will reach this point, which this orange arrow shows us. So let's see some other level on the right channel. Orange arrow, this is the result of moving to the right and moving upwards. So let's go back to what we had. We had the left channel moving to the left and moving upwards. We had the right channel moving to the right and moving upwards. And now we could say we have this orange arrow going there from the left and upwards. And then for this other arrow, we had to go to the right and we had to go upwards. So this will be our final position for the blue dot. And this gives us a new arrow, which is this light purple arrow now. And this is where our blue dot will end as a result of both channels. So what does it tell us? It has an amount of side movement and it has an amount of uh, moving upwards. And this side movement and this upwards movement we call mid and side signal. So back in our goniometer thing here, um, if we have level on the left channel and we have level on the right channel and they're always going um, up and down and up and down and they do the same thing. Our blue dot would be pushed up by the left channel and to the left and up and to the right by the right channel. So if we add this upwards movement, we will get an upwards movement. But if we add the sides movement, we will get no movement at all because as much as it will move to the left, it wants to move to the right. So as a result of these arrows, it will stay just in the middle of this um, display. So again, And this is what we call a mono signal. A mono signal is um, doing the same thing on the left and on the right channel or simply has no left or right information. It is just one level information. When we now think we have only one um, level uh, on the left channel, we have this picture here. And as we now can obviously see, is we have an upwards and downwards movement and we have movements to the sides. So um, only having level on the left or on the right channel means we're having level on the mid channel and on the side channel. So what is it now about? It is about our information um, and how it is stored. So um, most people think of a stereo system um, as a left speaker and a right speaker. Um, but when it comes to mixing, we see differently because um, usually we say, okay, we have a track with a signal that could be a guitar, a vocal or something else. And um, we say, okay, this is our recording and we place it in the stereo um, with our pan uh, knob here. So I turn that all the way to the left. I can put that to the middle and of course what happens is that the dot only moves in the middle and now as I turn that knob somewhere this dot will move with a um, with an amount of side movement which gives us the stereo information so actually while mixing we are already thinking mid and side based because we're thinking okay which is our signal and where is it happening? And this is what mid and side processing does. It says, okay, we have something that is happening, which is the mid signal. And then we have stereo information. And this is the side channel. And the stronger the stereo information is, the wider our track appears. So let's go in practice. And here we have a project um, where I only want to use the drum boss. Um, for that we can see what I'm talking about. And here we have uh, the bass drum, the snare, top microphone, snare bottom microphone, overhead left and overhead right, and our friend, uh, the binaural microphone, Harry. 
And what we can see here is that I have muted Harry and the overhead microphones. So we only have um, the bass drum microphone and the snare microphones. And these are all in the center of the pan. So um, what we will see is a line moving in the, um, in this mono axis. So let's see if it is correct. Yes, that is so. So actually we have level on the left and on the right um, channel, which we can see here in the master. But these are the exactly same uh, information on left and right channel. So we have the um, exact same amount of going up and going down. And we have the opposite amount of going to the sides from the left axis and the right axis. So the dot stays in the middle. So we have only a mono or a mid signal. We have no side signal. The side signal now is completely silent. But when I now unmute the other microphones, we will see that we will get some amount of side movement to the signal. So basically it still has a very large amount of um, the mid signal and a weak amount of the um, side signal. Let's hear it again. And this is because the mono microphones are still so dominant. So if I mute them, we will see a much more side uh, affected signal. So what we can see is that the overhead microphones and Harry together still have an amount of um, a mono signal, but they also have an amount of a side signal, which gives us this um, kind of circle. Um, I scaled the graphics here again a bit more. So, so much for the um, goniometer as such and um, to understand that we have the left axis and the right axis and the mono signal and the side signal. Let's go in uh, mid-side encoding and decoding and what we can do with that. And for that purpose, I would use a uh, Tukan Studios tool, which is a um, audio management tool plugin and um, you can do certain things there, high pass and low pass and left and right pun individually and face flip a channel and things like that. But what we want to use in the first place is we have a mid side balance control on that plugin. So now it says off because it's not doing anything to the signal. But as I turn it to the right, you see um, that the um, mono or the mid signal will get weaker and weaker and then we only have a side signal and uh, turning out left the side signals will get weaker and then we only have a mono signal so we can balance mid and side information in this plugin and um, let's see how this looks if I uh, balance this a bit more So what we can see is that um, the side information, when the side information is dominant, we get a kind of <laughs> laying egg. And if the mid information is stronger, we get a standing egg. And if we only have sides, um, we will get this line on this axis. And if we only have a mono signal, we get this line on this axis. And the more we boost the side signal, the wider our um, stereo image will get. But we should always keep in mind that um, the mono compatibility of our uh, mix will get weaker and weaker the more we boost the side signals. And I can show you that. I can 
turn that all the way to side, which sounds like this. But if I then want to play that back on a um, mono device, so um, a mono radio or um, some, some device that only has one speaker and um, gives our signals in mono, we will not have any signal left. So um, we will see signal uh, passing this um, tool plugin, we will see um, passing the um, drum bus goniometer, and we will see that there will be nothing left when I uh, hit mono on the master. Because turned all the way to the sides, we don't have a mono signal left. So if I put that to the center again and we have a mono signal, we will still have a signal in the master if we play it back in mono. So now let's get one step further and um, do the encoding. So we make from left and right channel on the input side of this plugin a um, mid and side channel output. So on the left channel or the left pin out here, there will be the mid signal and on the right channel or the second pin out will be the side signal. And that can sound quite funny if I only have encoding and no decoding after that. Sounds like this. And now we can do things to this um, signal. So maybe we take the um, bus compressor and we put that in dual mode. So um, this uh, left side will um, process the left channel individually from the right channel. And um, we have the input in mid and side. So this will process the mids and this will process the side's channel. Um, we have done this um, encoding with tool. Um, so don't be irritated, you can do this encoding in the plugin itself. You don't need tool for that, it's just an example. Um, and then after the um, bus compressor, we need another instance of the tool plugin. So let's put that in there. So we have tool for the encoding, then we have a plugin that can handle the left and the right channel individually. And then we take tool again for the decoding. So um, what it gets here is mid and side and returns left and right. And now we have this, um, this funny compressor here, so we can compress the um, mid uh, information a bit and maybe we boost the side information and um, have a playback and sounds like this. And as you can see we have a cloud that is um, more uh, on the horizontal than on the vertical lines and um, this is not a fully mono compatible uh, thing. So if we play that back to our audience on uh, mono devices, um, there's a lot of things that they can't hear. So um, keep an eye on this um, line down here, which is red now. Um, if it's on the left side, um, we have a stronger side information than a mono information, and this is not mono compatible. So um, we will keep this line on the right side. So if I boost the sides too much, it goes to the left side and we have this problem. So maybe I boost the, um, the mid channel as well. And this would be a fine thing. So um, if I now uh, bypass this compressor, is what we're basically doing is nothing. So we're using tool to um, encode the signal and then we directly decode it again. So we, um, we've done something, we reversed uh, directly after that. And um, when I then uh, engage the compressor, you'll hear the difference.
and as said, in this compressor, um, you can choose mid and side, and it will automatically encode the signal um, before it uh, processes the signal. Um, and then you have this mid channel and the side channel, and then it will um, decode it uh, directly in the plugin. So you don't need to use tool and the dual mode. You can use MS mode for that instead. But what I wanted to show you is that you can put in between these both of the tool plugins every plugin that can handle the left and the right channel individually. So you can have mid side processing with any plugin that can handle left and right channel individually. Of course, with some tricks, you could uh, use any plugin um, and uh, just feed it with the mid signal and on another track, just feed it with the side signal and bring that together again later. Um, but that would be too far for now. So I hope that helped and I hope you have fun with the plugins and bye bye. Thanks again, John, for that fantastic explanation of mid side processing. I hope this helps. It definitely helped me. Be sure to check out John's channel on YouTube, I'll leave a link in the description. And if you're not familiar, definitely be sure to check out Toucan Studios plugins, handcrafted by John himself. As always, if you like the content, be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and you can support the channel by clicking the buy me a coffee, super thanks, or membership links below. Visit us on Discord and engage with other Reaper users. We'll see you next time. It takes a big man to admit when he's wrong. It takes an even bigger man to laugh at him. <laughs> <laughs>